Hey everyone, we're back. Second question on force vectors. Simple review for strengths one. We already did the intro and kind of the theory for the last video. So this is like a two part series. So we're gonna skip all that and we're just gonna go right into the question. So let's get started. The question asks, find the magnitude of the resultant force in its direction measured counterclockwise from the positive x axis. All right, so what do we do here? Well, we have a uh, diagram up here, okay? It has three forces. All right, we have the directions of the forces and uh, for one of the forces here, F3, we're given a three, four, five triangle to use instead of a, an angle, all right? And uh, so we're just gonna show you how to use that instead of calculating the, the angle there, which can be unnecessary and can lead to small rounding errors. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to do this one just slightly differently and I'm going to calculate each force. I'm gonna show you its X and its Y component. We're gonna write both of those out and at the end we're gonna sum all the X's and all the Y's up to get the resultant force. And then after that, we are going to find the angle. So let's start with F1. So we have F1, all right, F1, and we're just going to get do a little sub X here, all right? So the X component for F1, well, as we can see, F1 is on the X axis and it's in the positive direction. So that one's pretty simple. The X component of F1 is equal to 900 newtons. Perfect. And because F1 is only on the X axis, that means that if there's no Y component to that, that force. So we have F1 in the Y direction is equal to zero. Perfect. Let's go ahead and move on to F2. So we have F2 here, all right? And F2 has both a X and a Y component, all right? So this is the Y component. I, I like to just draw a little triangle here. This helps me visualize it, all right? And we can go ahead and with another color draw the X component, okay? So for F2 in the X direction, like just like we did in the last video, all right? We're looking for the green part of this triangle here, the green component that's in the X axis. And just re refresh your trigonometric basics from high school, and you should know that this green little line here is equal to F2, which is 750. All right, and we have cosine here. This is the adjacent, okay? Adjacent times hypotenuse. So we have cosine 45. All right, and what about the F2 vector in the Y direction? Well, we're looking for the purple line now, right? So we go ahead and use uh, sine, right? Because we have, we're looking for the opposite side of the triangle. Very good. Now, let's go to F3 in the X direction. So, little trick for you here. As we can see, they've tried to confuse us by putting this vector, which is going in this direction, but they, they translated it up here into the, uh, the second quadrant. And it's exactly the same as if you were to, for example, draw the vector coming down this way, okay? Those two vectors are equivalent. It doesn't matter where the vector is, okay? All you need to know is the direction of the vector and it's the direction and its orientation in the plane, all right? So, this is 650. Now, whenever you see a triangle here, okay, for example, say we want to, like as we're doing right now, solve for the X component of F3. So in this case, we have four as the X component of the little triangle given, five as the hypotenuse. So the X component is going to be 650, okay, times four over five. And this is all Newtons here, sorry about that. And We'll do the same thing for the Y, for F3. We're going to take the Y component of the little triangle, which is three. We're gonna divide that by five, and we're gonna multiply it by 650. Three over five, that's going to give us our Y component of F3. Okay, so well, what do we do now? How do we proceed? Simple, we're asked, like we always do, we take a look at what the question asks again and we're asked to find the magnitude of the resultant force and its direction. So first we're gonna go ahead and find the resultant force and how do we do that? Well, we simply sum up all of the X's and then we sum up all of the Y's and what that equals to will be the resultant force. So let's go ahead and add the X's first, okay? So the sum of the result, the, all the X components, okay? And we're going to say that 
right is our positive direction, okay, is going to be 900, okay, plus 750 cosine 45, plus 650, 4 over 5, okay, and that is going to give us... So, the result, the x component of the resultant force, okay, this isn't the resultant force, this is the just the x component of the resultant force, all right? So we have FR, okay, x component is equal to 1950 newtons, just rounding off. Okay, so how do we uh, continue from here? Well, we do exactly the same thing for the y component of the resultant force. So we're going to add these up, okay, so we have the sum of the y components, okay, where up is our positive direction, and we are going to add these together here. So we have 750 sine 45, okay? And also, now let's uh, not make the mistake here of, and I, I actually, uh, I didn't include this negative here, which I should have, but we can see that this, uh, the, the y component of this is going down, all right? So when we add these together, since we've uh, assigned a positive up direction for our y components, we need to give this a negative sign because it's going downwards, all right? So we have 650 times three over five, okay? And that is equal to 140. So, the y component of our resultant force is equal to 140 newtons. Perfect. So, what we have now, okay, is we have both components of our force uh, for the resultant, and all we need to do now is we need to find the resultant force of the vector itself. Okay, and how we do that, all right, is we go ahead and we use the Pythagorean theorem, right? So if I draw a little bit of a Cartesian plane here, all right, what this looks like, okay, is we have, and this is, I'm just not drawing it to scale, but okay, we have our F, R, Y, this, this little vector here, okay, and that's equal to 140 newtons, right? And on the X, positive X direction, okay, we have our, x component of the resultant force, and that's equal to 1950. All right, and if we take the, if we use Pythagoras here, okay, we're going to get our resultant force, which is going to look something like this. And the angle that we're looking for is right here. Okay, I know that's kind of a small sketch, but I hope that uh, just kind of helps to visualize it. So, all we need to do is use Pythagoras, okay? So, uh, our c squared is going to be equal to a squared plus b squared. So, let's do that. Our fr is going to be equal to the square root of 1950 squared plus 140 squared, all right? And if we go ahead and calculate that, we should get the, the resultant force is equal to 1,955 newtons. All right. Very good. So we found the resultant force, okay, which is right here. And we just need to finish up the question by finding the direction that it makes with the positive x-axis, all right? So take a look at where they want you to find it from. And like I said, they want us to find this angle here. So in order to find that angle, and I'll just draw maybe a little bit bigger of a sketch here. So we have a triangle that looks like this. All right, we want to find this angle. This, if this is our FRY and this is our FRX here, okay, we can use trig in order to find theta. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have uh, our opposite as FRY, which is 140, okay? And we have our FRX, which is 1950. That's going to be our adjacent. Okay, and taking the inverse tan of this quotient here. So we have 140 divided by 1950. Take the tan inverse of that. And our theta equals 4.1, and we'll just round it to one degrees. Okay, 
And that is the direction that the resultant force makes with the positive x-axis. Okay, so I uh, hope that was clear to you. I know the sketches are a little bit small, but I tried to fit it in on one page, but that was a, you know, just a quick review on how to find the angle of the resultant force, how to find the resultant force. Hopefully that helped, and let's get into some trickier problems shortly. Subscribe and like if you enjoyed the video.